What is up everyone? It is Lavenger Gaming and once again I am back with another classic RTS series. Today we're going to be taking on the second of the Nod Covert Ops missions. This one's particularly tricky if you try to play it in a straight up way, but we're going to be looking at how to utilize the Commandos and the Chinook to maximum efficacy to do this mission relatively quickly. I make a few missed plays of course, I'm not perfect, but this is a general guide on how you can approach this mission. With that said, let's get this underway. What is up everyone, it is Lavenger Gaming here, as you know from the intro already. Now this mission has us pre-deployed with two commandos, so the very first thing you want to do is get them into separate control groups, so that you can control them as quickly as possible. And I also told a lie to you guys right then, because I said that's the very first thing you want to do, when in fact it's the very second thing you want to do. The very first thing you want to do is lower the game speed so that you've got precision to control these units. It's very easy to misclick and lose them, especially with the amount of grenadiers that GDI have floating around. It's very annoying. So we're going to move both units up and we're going to keep our engineer safe as we can. And as we move up, more GDI units will come to engage us. When you've got these guys in two individual control groups, it helps with the amount of infantry you can deal with at once. Those of you that have played this game a lot know that the Commando does have cooldowns between his shots. And he can take advantage of that. Uh, or the enemy can take advantage of that and actually overrun a Commando. Especially with Grenadiers and with how close the Commando likes to walk to units before he shoots sometimes. So crossing this threshold triggers a Chinook to spawn. The Chinook doesn't unload any men. So you're more than welcome to just ignore it. In fact, you're going to need it. Which is why it's next to a lovely crate of money. And as you clean up infantry, you'll see another Chinook spawn slightly to the north. Now that does have units in it, and that is launching a hostile attack. But with two commandos watching the uh, steps, as it were, the Chinook is no match. And uh, flies away, reporting of its casualties, I suppose. Now we're going to spread the commandos out just to clear out the rest of this map. There are grenadiers hiding, there are uh, rocket soldiers hiding. You've got to be careful, as you can see I'm controlling the commandos quite poorly. It would be even worse than this should the game speed not be as low as it currently is. So there you go, that's just that's just me making a really strong argument for why you need to lower the game speed. Now the Chinook is flying over. You see a lot of that. That Humvee to the south is a neutral Humvee. It's not host it's hostile to us and it's hostile to GDI at the exact same time. Entering this village triggers another Chinook to spawn. And it will unload men. And as you can see it's unloading men on a very dangerous side. So I quickly back out of there. And I send one commando in for our crate of money. Now with both crates of money secured, I'm going to send one commando to capture the Chinook, and the other commando just inside the Chinook. And at this point we can increase the game speed again, because we're done with the commando segment of this level. Move the commando over here to reveal some of the Tiberium, that will be important in a couple of seconds, you will see. Now with the commando loaded in, we're going to give our Chinook a move order towards that little patch of visible terrain. And that just so happens makes it land in a nod base of all things. No wonder they gave us a little bit of a visible corner. Now once you've entered that village and left it, the Humvee that is neutral goes running around the map and you'll, if you're lucky you'll get to see some uh, parts of a GDI base as it gets shot by base defenses. That bit of sandbags blocks a five engineer drop that GDI likes to execute on this map. They drop behind your base and absolutely uh, catch you up by guard. 
by capturing all your buildings as you try to build up. No, there's three GDI gun turrets or guard towers to the north. You can see them right there. There's another three to the southeast of our base, keeping us pinned in. Now that's actually an advantage for us because it means the attacks that GDI are trying to send our way are not actually attacking us. Now we're going to use the helicopter to bait out two orcas. And we're then going to fly back to our rocket soldiers. And what that's going to do is allow the rocket soldiers to kill the orca. And that will set up the final phase of this mission. You have the commando phase, you have the kill the orcas phase, and now you have the win the game phase. Lots of Brotherhood of Nod missions are based around the same thematic. That thematic being deception and subterfuge. You know, with all the Brotherhood of Nod's missions, you are performing sort of deceptive attacks or you're subterfuging. You know, the Brotherhood of Nod's army is very inferior to GDI's in terms of raw firepower. And to that effect, uh, very rarely in a Brotherhood of Nod mission do you just go head to head with GDI smash tanks against each other there until one of you wins because GDI almost always comes out on top during that. What we are instead doing is sneaking in. So the AI has a critical flaw and this flaw exists in a lot of missions. And that flaw is that its AI doesn't actually activate until you do something or hit a particular set of triggers. Uh, one such thing that would indicate a trigger is if you damage their harvesters. Damaging a GDI harvester often gets them to uh, fight back and respond to you. And there's the uh, guard towers on the south. I walked too close to them. Now, selling the construction yard actually helps in more than one way. First and foremost, it makes sure that the GDI can't stop building AGTs because it's one of the first things they will do when that AI activates is they will build advanced guard towers. You do have to be careful, they will ion cannon you. GDI's priorities for the ion cannon are always base defenses if you have any. So our plan is to just get inside the power, and in doing so, their only standing AGT is now offline. And just like that we can build remaining engineers and capture what remains of the GDI base, should we so choose. The AI hasn't truly activated even now, and they've lost half their base, so this game is pretty much done. This is the optimal way to do this level, I think. Well, I say optimal. You could play it better than I did, but this is this is how I would recommend you do this level. It's quite difficult to break out of your base, and actually the GDI wall on your base is an advantage for you, because they can't attack you. Now, with the building of that command center, you can see those engineers that were waiting at the south of our base. They would have captured our construction yard and probably our hand of nod as well. And that makes this level impossible to do if you lose both of those. So now we can build the obelisk of light. It's a very, 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 very fun and good base defense. It's uh, very good for dealing with mammoth tanks. But additionally, the very first thing we can do is command it to destroy the advanced comm center. And you can see why I don't like GDI on this level. And it's because even without their com advanced comm center, they can still ion cannon you. Which is absolutely fantastic. Very useful. Uh, and not in the least bit annoying. So... We're just using obelisks of light to clear up what remains. We have a harvester still alive, which means we actually now have an economy as well. We can fly this back. And with our couple of soldiers, sort of just move around. Get the harvester mining so that we have... 
uh, income, and then we can start building tanks to clear up what remains of the GDI presence on the map. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What you have in the top right corner is the most hilarious thing ever, and that is <laughs> a technician fight, which gets in rudely interrupted by the gun turrets, I'm afraid. As, okay. as fun as it would have been to let those guys have a little yep. fight for all eternity, um, they don't. Selling our gun turrets will give us enough money to produce a harvester, more or less. It'll also give us three minigunners for every gun turret that we sell. Now we have two harvesters um, to our refinery. One is still damaged, so it will be moving slower. A tank below 50% health moves slower. And you can see a considerable collection of engineers has formed on our southern border. GDI keeps doing these engineer flybys, which is why it's very important to block that little segment off with a wall. If you feel a wall is cheap, you could put a flame soldier there, and the flame soldier will do exactly the same thing. Yes, sir. On hold. He will just kill the uh, the engineers yeah, as okay. they land. Okay. Now, I'll admit I'm wasting time here, trying to build another refinery and building up an economy. As you can see, there are still areas where GDI has tanks on the board and stationary infantry. Their AI never truly activated, so they aren't really throwing everything at us like they might. So, we're selling a couple of buildings just to finish our refinery a bit quicker. And now with two refineries, three harvesters, we're going to start building medium tanks. Medium tanks are very good for what remains on this map, which is GDI medium tanks and guard towers. There's a lot of guard towers all over the map. Leaving the obelisk standing just to deal with the wayward tank that does roam into our base. At least until we get some tanks up. Once we get a good collection of tanks up, we can push out onto the map and finish off GDI. Really, this mission is won at this point. It really is just a matter of finishing the level off. Our harvester manages to survive to deliver off one more load of Tiberium, which is fortunate. I'm just selling what buildings we don't need at this point now as well, because all we're trying to do is pump out as many tanks as possible. Three tanks is a good number to get out on the map. You can overrun individual tanks quite easily, outrange guard towers so that they don't take any damage. Those of you that have played Red Alert um, know the uh, power that is uh, firing and then moving with your tanks. That would have come across looking much better had I not um, moved the tanks into the range of the guard tower. As you can see, medium tanks outrange guard towers quite comfortably. So there's no reason to endanger your troops. And you can just find the infantry and give them a little squish as well. The GDI has these guard command posts all around the map. Just destroy them. You'll trigger reinforcements as they come under attack. Which is one of the reasons why uh, I was attack moving there because I was trying to squash the infantry as well as take out the chinook. I was unsuccessful, but uh, the thought was there. As you shoot their structures, GDI will send more and more infantry towards you, but as you know, they don't have production. So as they're doing this, it's actually helpful because it's thinning out the presence of their infantry across the entire map. And now we've got another three tanks ready. We can push down towards this tank here. And I'm giving up on the fancy auto moving now. And I'm just we're having a straight up fight with the tanks. But again, as grenadiers show up, we're going to try and run them over. We're just going to focus on outranging the advanced guard tower. And one of the command centers is down. 
I don't know why I'm focusing on building a stronger economy here instead of, uh, you know, just pumping out tanks. But uh, we have an economy now. Worst case scenario, we lose all these tanks. We have an economy. As you can see, our main base is kept very safe, both by the wall we put up, that one singular wall segment, and the fact that GDI have us completely walled in. They don't have the uh, common sense or the know-how to um, sell their structures to be able to reach us or, you know, kill a part of the wall segment. Heavens forbid they destroy a wall. And so they will just sit outside our base like, we want in. As a result, I tend to leave those guard towers towards the very end once I'm certain that GDI don't have much left. Because they can be quite annoying if they get in there. Now what we are doing is exactly what I said we should have been doing five minutes ago. We're pumping out medium tanks. Again, you can outrange guard towers, so it's very easy to just poke away at them. Lots of guard towers on this northern segment. This was to... If you remember the start of this mission, we started just down here, just south of this point. So this was to very much discourage you from rushing them with commandos. Very much a do not go through here port uh, symbol. The guard towers to the south also say do not go through here either. Now, we've got plenty of tanks now. We don't even need to worry about outranging the guard towers to control them properly. We're at the point where our army is strong enough. So, now we can push towards our base and set ourselves free. Hopefully clearing out the command posts along the way. I like to think highly of myself that I was that I was going to do that, but it do it doesn't seem that I was. So never mind. Now we can sell the obelisk of light because GDI doesn't have any buildings left on the map. They have nothing left to take us out with. We build an airstrip for good measure. So why not at this point? There's uh, guard towers to the north that I wasn't paying attention to. They just killed one of our uh, harvesters. So remember that if you're doing this mission for yourself, there are two guard towers to the very northernmost point of the map, protecting some Tiberium. I forgot, and I lost a harvester for it. Unfortunately... The harvester that I just built to replace the one we lost uh, landed via airstrip and not out of the uh, heavy factory or the weapons factory, meaning that we just it just lost half of its health as soon as it spawned in. Now, two medium tanks, as you know, they're going to take care of those guard towers in no time at all. You've got medium tanks on the north, on the southern north. The northern entrance to our base, I don't know what I'm trying to say. GDI are trying to land even more engineers behind the walls. You can sort of see why I put that singular wall segment there now. They're just, they're just very annoying and very persistent with their engineers. So even if you had engineers ready to capture back after they capture the first time, they just keep doing it. It's very annoying. Um, their ion cannon will take out a base defense. So you can't just cover it with an obelisk and hope for the best. It's a very expensive investment. But, that's more or less this mission, as the obelisk finishes off all of those engineers, we are more or less done. There it is.
So it's as I said before, very straightforward once you know what you're doing. You can certainly improve on how I did that with strategies of your own, and I'd actually be interested to see some of them should you choose to do so. Remember, three phases. You have the commando phase, the rocket soldier phase, and then the win the game phase. Once you're inside the GDI base and have its key structures captured, it's smooth sailing from there out and very hard to fail the level. Anyway, as always, like, share the video, leave a comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.